the devil went to work very early to destroy the whole idea of God's creation made in his image after his likeness. And then once he caused Adam and Eve to sin, Jesus went and had the plan to redeem us. And he had to go all the way through all of that time in the Old Testament. And those people had no God in their heart like we do in the New Testament. So they had to follow God out of fear and apprehension and if they did anything wrong, you know, so they wanted to please God. And so you see a lot of times the Israelites never knew a God that loves them and cares for them. Now Abraham was a different story. Remember God made a covenant with Abraham and gave us the insight to that covenant so we can understand what that covenant would be in the New Testament. Think about it. Covenant means to cut where blood flows. And it also is the highest contract that ever can be made. So if I was to make a contract with Seth, and we went as far as to do something like, cut, you know, cut our wrists and do a blood covenant, God forbid. I'm not going <laughs> to, Jesus did that. But, you know, to do that very thing means that the covenant or the contract is very serious in order for blood to flow. Do you understand? And so you can see God's compassion in the fall of Adam and Eve right in the beginning. That when Adam was hiding in the bushes, blaming his wife, <laughs> God said to him, where are you, Adam? And you know, we know the story. And he says, he says, have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to eat of? Now, what we read in there religiously from Satan is, you did it, and I'm going to punish you, and now you'll never be able to save yourself. You're just going to go under a whole curse. That's what religion teaches. That's not what God, how God felt. He had just lost his, his children. And so when he approached, he needed to assess how Adam was dealing with his fallen nature. Folks, let me tell you, you might have somebody in your family who has not dealt with their life yet. They're basically good. They're basically nice, or you wouldn't be with them. But they have not dealt with God and dealt with their ability to surrender. So you pray for them. You love them as best you can. The Bible tells if you're married to somebody that's not saved, let it be by the good behavior of the wife or the husband to win that spouse. You see, when I got saved, I was already married. You see. What do you do about that? And the person, you know, but anyway, so there are times where we end up getting saved after we've been married for some time and our partner might not want to submit to God. You don't do it by preaching at him or making him feel guilty or her making her feel guilty. You do it by praying and showing a good testimony. Can you say amen? Are you ready to get into some of this? We're going to study. We've been doing a whole series on how new creation reality. We're going to call this, because we're close to Thanksgiving Thursday, the wisdom of being thankful. Now, true story in the Reader's Digest, um, a, a lady named uh, Oprah Winfrey. Now, you might like her, you might not like her. You're not supposed to not like anybody, except for the devil and that group. Pray for them. Anyway, she was asked the question, what do you suppose is the, the secret to your prosperity? The, why you prosper? He says, she said, being thankful. Thankful first to God and thankful to others that have helped me along the way. Now think about your life. How thankful are we actually? Thankful to God. Thankful for those that help us along the way. We should be, and I know you probably are. But that was an interview a long time ago about with Oprah Winfrey. She thanked God at that time and she thanked and she says, being thankful keeps you open to receive. Being down, being negative shuts you off. And even if there is a blessing coming your way, you won't see it. And the scripture for that is in Jeremiah 17 verses 5 and 6. Read it later, okay? All right, so... Let's look at our scripture. I love this scripture. It's a good one. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Everyone say Jesus. Jesus. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Tell everybody. Testify. 
Sing to him. Oh boy, here we go. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face. Oh, there's that face-to-face -face relationship. I talk about it all the time. Everyone says, why don't you just be quiet? But the reason people will respond to me that way when I tell them about the face-to-face, because -face, they're not doing it. And so when they don't do it, they're going to get under conviction. So please start doing it. Your life will change even more. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders and his judgments of his mouth. Is that the last scripture? One more. There's five. Oh, I got five. Okay. Super duper. Everyone say rejoice. All right. So good morning, church of God. Blessed is he that lives in you. And if you let him take control of your life, he will guide you and you'll have good days. And I, I believe with all my heart that those good days will get better and better as we follow his steps that he lays out before us. He's called our good shepherd, the, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. And if we learn to follow him, we shall not want. He makes us to lay down in green pastures. I used to say that and, and then I would stop and I would say green pastor <laughs> back when I was green okay and he leads us beside still waters and somebody says well brother still waters don't run and so they get stale and I looked at him no still waters run deep and I'm going to baptize you <laughs> sheep are interesting I'm just going to throw this out no extra charge sheep have wool right and they have to periodically be Shaven or shorn, right? So that they're nice and neat looking and everything. Because sheep don't have very much intuitive wisdom. In other words, they don't know enough what to do when a, when a, when a wolf comes by. And if they get, and this is the one that really gets me. And thank God, you're, not, you're only likened unto sheep. You're not a mindless you know, person. Anyway, a sheep will go by the water, and if the water is too deep, and it will go out to try to get a drink, and if the water's moving, it will get on their wool and literally soak up their wool and pull them right over and drown them. So the shepherd leads them beside still waters. You see, you see what I'm saying? So really, that psalm is about how God wants to walk with you, how God wants to fill you, how God wants to order our steps so that our lives take on living. Didn't Jesus say, I will come that you might have life and have it more abundantly? But the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. So we need to understand that. So we've been doing this series on New creation realities. We're going to call this one the wisdom of being thankful. Say there's wisdom in it. <laughs> Amen. So go with me to Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. And as you go, I'm going to read my paragraph to you and wait for my hiccups to quit. It's funny, ever since that I had my operations and, and I've lost a whole lot of weight, and it doesn't look like a whole lot of weight, but you know, over 100 pounds and everything works so well you know every once in a while I'll get hiccups I don't know if you've ever had hiccups gone on about 14 15 times you know and I asked the Lord about it you know why is he going off on hiccups because hiccups helps your diaphragm to adjust and now that my system's working better my diaphragm has to adjust and why does it have to do it when I'm preaching Amen? All right, so follow me here. So basically, God has given us something that we could apply to create an opening of the heavens. Now think about it in the beginning. When Adam and Eve committed sin, what happened to God on this planet? Let's see if you get this right. When 
Adam and Eve sinned, what did God do? Well, God approached Adam, asked him the questions, and then killed an animal, took the blood in the skins, and covered them so he could fellowship with his man. Because going back to what I first said, God doesn't want to lose you as a child. Can you say amen? So God will never turn on you. Not like the Old Testament. That was a different thing. God will never put you down. He will never say one bad thing. Here's another thing that we can learn. God, even if you're messing up real bad, like, like Job was. Job was messing up. People don't know it. He married an unsaved woman. The Bible says don't do that. You're unequally yoked and it won't work out. Ladies, if your man doesn't know as much of God as you, don't marry him. Because you're going to babysit him all your life. And God doesn't call you to be a babysitter. He calls you to be a wife. I know that's a hard one to preach. That's why Paul warns about people yoking up with somebody. I'll, I'll get that person saved. Ladies, you'll never get your husband saved. It'll be, have to be God that'll do it. Okay, so if you are single, do not look for a spouse. The Bible says, because when you do, you could choose the wrong one. Anybody here ever experienced? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Amen. And, and I didn't mean to. I didn't know anything. The Bible says to, to study, find out. You say, well, I'm going to do something like get married. I want to figure out how God wants it done. The Bible says that God will actually bring your spouse to you if you'll be patient enough to wait for it. Can you say amen? amen? Not say, oh me. You see, there's a lot of things that are after the fact. So I don't you feel bad at all that you've been through things, you know. That's why we can't condemn anybody about, about marriage and divorce or certain things because people have been through it and then they've got saved after the fact. You see, so we want to give grace. Everyone got Colossians? Let's read it. Colossians 1, verses 9 through 14. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. That's where Linda and I are about you. And to ask that you be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. God has to help us do that. Fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. See, all the patience you'll ever need, all the long suffering you'll ever need is already in you in the form of Jesus Christ. For he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Can you say amen? <laughs> Bless you. I'll probably see if I can get that in a minute. Okay, so anyway, as we continue to read on, it says, be strengthened with might. And then it goes on in verse, giving thanks, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who, now listen, who has qualified us. See, we can't do it without him. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Where? In light. Folks, you and I walk in light. Amen. So here's the deception. If you get up in the morning, meet with God, get filled with light, get covered, clothed with light, then Satan can't get near you because he can't approach the light. Now, what happens? You get up, suddenly you put everything else on your brain, start worrying again, start talking negative, and the light starts to dim. And Satan says, that's not Jesus, that's Carrie. And I know how to get to carry. You see, during your growing up, there are certain trigger points Satan laced into you. What's a moat? That when that trigger word is spoken, there's a reaction you have. Now, don't panic. That's, way, that's called a stronghold. And the Bible says we're to take our strongholds and let Jesus remove them. But those have been placed in us even since we were kids. Fears, anxieties, different things. You get a deja vu once in a while. Don't be afraid of that word. That just means it seems familiar. Either you dreamed about it, you experienced it, or something keeps repeating itself. 
Remember, Satan tries to work patterns in on us so he can anticipate or he can interpret and anticipate our next move. That's why we're to be like the wind. We're blows and stuff, being led by the Spirit. Sherry gets up in the morning, she meets with God, and God says, I want you to do this. She's doing it, and Satan goes, Wah! Nobody told me she was going to do that. We live in a different society, a different kingdom. We have a different set of rules and regulations in the spirit. Can you say amen? It's something that Satan cannot touch. It's something that Satan cannot understand. It's something Satan cannot do anything about because we're covered in the blood. We're covered in the light. We're covered in the glory. This is a day of thanksgiving. Do not look in the past. Remember, you are a new creation for the future. I kind of made myself happy there just for a minute. Are you with me? Not only that, but folks, listen to this. Verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he has conveyed or translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Of his love. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Listen, listen, listen. The forgiveness of sins. The word sin there is with an S. That means every future mistake that you could even make, God's got it covered if you go to him. Woo! For, for Scott and I, that's good. What do you mean for Scott and you? Well, for all of us, that's good. Because Satan can't hold anything against us. Amen. Woo! You are God's flashlight. Here is beaming luminous. Can you see, man? If you ever look at some of those flashlights nowadays, 1500 luminous, got a little spotlight on your head. First sermon I ever preached with, with a spotlight on my head, I had a forest fire. 26 people came to the Lord. I didn't even know how to lead somebody to Jesus. I just said, if you want Jesus, come in the middle. They came in the middle and the power of God knocked them down off their feet. And I'm going, wow, God, can this happen to me some more? Amen. <laughs> We're going to cover these four areas. Number one, thankful. Are you thankful for your salvation? Are you thankful for your salvation? Jesus went to hell and back for it. And that's why it pleases the Father for us to lift Jesus up, especially in the middle of what we might be experiencing that's not so pleasant. We keep lifting Jesus up. God keeps lifting you up. When Jesus was lifted up or the serpent on the pole in the wilderness and so shall my son be lifted up. Those that stared at the serpent on the pole or focused face to face with Jesus got healed. Hello? It's your face to face relationship and what you practice that makes the difference. So. Be thankful for your salvation too. Whatever we do in word and deed, be thankful. Don't do it if you can't do it in joy. Say amen. And if you have to do it anyway, then make yourself happy while you do it and to God. Do it with thanksgiving. Third, be thankful that God delivered you from darkness and forgive you of all your sin, including your future. Be thankful. Woohoo! Satan accuses you and says, remember you did this? Remember you did that? Remember you did that? Just smile and go, well, you know something, devil? Let me remind you of your future. Hell's getting hotter. And then turn your back and walk off. Don't repeat the words of what Satan says. Don't repeat the negative words that put you in some kind of a, a, a locking box that says you're this way. You'll never improve. That was a lie that that person told you. Very precious to your heart. And God says, no, I have a bigger plan. That's for you, sister. Amen. A bigger plan. Woo, hold on. Just hold on for the glory of God. Amen. So you with, whew, man, the spirit is all over me. Okay, so thankful for being delivered and, and out of darkness and forgiven of our sin. And finally, stay thankful. Stay thankful. No matter what, 
Folks, one of the, my teachers, I have a, a lot of what I call teachers that have spoken into my life. And anybody can speak into my I'm a very correctable person. As long as you approach me with respect and say, Carrie, you know, I think you're missing it in this area, I'll receive it. But if you come against me like, a, like I'm, at, you know, then you have no respect for me and I don't want to receive anything you have to say. That's how it works, ladies. You got a man, show him respect. You know, m men are different. You have to show them respect before they can love you. You see, and you need love, ladies. See, so a man needs respect so he can love. A woman needs love so she can respect. A little, a little spice for you. Put that first and watch God work. I don't know why I said it. But you might need to hear it. All right, so you're with me? Thankful for our salvation. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Very familiar scripture. I'm going to go through it rather quickly. We'll be starting with verse 4. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 says, But God, oh, amen, who is rich in mercy because of his great love to which he loved us, even when we were in dead in trespasses and sin, he's made us alive together with Christ. And by grace, you have been saved. How are we saved? Unmerited favor. God gave you salvation and said, would you by faith pick it up? Nothing you earn, nothing you can do, nothing you can't do. Just accept Jesus Christ and God accepts you. Say amen. The great exchange. Then it goes on further to say, and he's raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly or spiritual places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship or masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. You see, God has a plan for every one of you, and he had that plan before you were born. And Satan went right away as soon as you got born and got into the world. He started bombarding, trying to get you away from following God. Now you understand what everybody in the world that's made in a human form is going through. That's why we preach Christ, we preach the gospel, and not religion. Because if you tell somebody who's a brand new Christian, well, you never know what God's going to do, sister. He be, could be leading you through a hard time, or he could be doing this sh to show you some very special things. Sounds religious, doesn't it? Absolutely from the pit. God's not stupid enough to lead you around by a carrot. Don't you think he can wake you up and say, Sherry, I need you to do this. So let's pop off this religious garb. And the church is full of it in the Northwest. People are running around flagging and then blaming God for things. They're living in the Old Testament. We're not in the Old Testament. We are in the New that means we learn from the mistakes of the old. We learn from the good things of the old. But we apply it in the new. Hey, if you got an old car and a new car, which one would you like to drive? Well, it, then you got the person that's always got this rebuttal. I'd like to drive my antique old car. I didn't say antique old car. What I said was your old car and your new car. Which one do you like to drive? The new car. Well, good. You're in the New Testament. Learn how to go with God. It's much different than trying to follow him through principles of the old. All right, so you, you, are you with me? Let's go on. And so we were made for good works, weren't we? A couple of points. We should be grateful that Jesus Christ paid the price, went to hell, took our sufferings, took all of our penalties, and gave us salvation. It's a gift to God. Are you thankful? Someone say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Two, we are to be thankful for the things Jesus Christ went through and the victory that he handed to us. The Bible says he conquered, but we become more than conquerors through him that loved us. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. 
as long as I let Jesus do the leading. As long as you're taking the lead, you're going to get buffeted. Stay under the blood and under the light. You'll never look for a step again. You see, why do you take the flashlight out when you're camping? So you can see where to step when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> why do you need Jesus in your life in the earth? Because you need light when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> you're in a, actually I'm going to tell you, and don't get mad at me. This is a sewer compared to what God's been doing. He's been almost gone away over a little over 2,000 years. And it took him six days to reset this earth up. And then the devil ruined it so bad. What do you think your life's going to be in heaven when he's spent 2,000 years formulating your place? God wants us to be thinking about heaven all the time. Not like we're going to die and go there tomorrow. But what if we did? So we need to be asking God about the heavenly realm. Did you know this planet was made in direct pattern of heaven? Heaven has a north, south, east, and west, which means it's a planet. So it's earth made after its likeness. And of course, we know the devil messed it all up, didn't he? God, and then God tried to give it to man. Man messed it up again. Man keeps messing things up. Have you ever noticed whenever man gets their hands involved without God, it always messes up? How, how do you like the price of gas? Somebody messed up. How do you like the price of food? Somebody messed up. I know you don't like it, so you go to God and you say, God, change all of that. Put the right people in, in the right places. The Bible says in Proverbs that when you have a fool that rules, everybody's frustrated. Hello. And we won't go any further on that. Okay? Just remember, if I was a ding-dong and, and they, everybody called me the pastor, and we have a lot of ding-dong people, bless their hearts, that have lots of money and lots of schooling, and they can pay for everything. So you see the big buildings with the nice bands and the big, big hada boo boo doo Go and ask the musicians, are they paid? And they'll say, yep. Do we pay our musicians here? We don't hardly see any. You see, there's a whole different system that's working inside of the other to get us to go another way, an alternative. But thank God we're following Jesus. Nothing wrong with bands. I would like to have one. A worship band and a wonderful children's teacher to help the children. I would love to have that. But this is the way I pray. God, I only want it if you want it and the right people to be in those positions that will create growth. Say amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. So we're to be thankful. Amen. For our salvation and everything Jesus went to. So say with me, thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go to our next point. Our next point is, whatever we do in word and deed, be thankful. Right? Psalms 100, verses 4 and 5, while you go to Colossians chapter 3. You go to Colossians 3. I'm going to read you a scripture while you're going there. Verse 14. Psalms 100, verse 4 and 5 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Isn't that wonderful? Be thankful. Now, whose team are you on? Huh? Whose team are you on? God's team. Has he ever lost? No. Has he ever had a problem? So the key is, if you are having problems, this is not a big one. This is just an understanding for you. And again, not me trying to tell you. You're lacking in prayer. Because if you'll pray, maybe you're just 
sort of tipping God in prayer. Lord, watch over my family. Thank you, Lord. Get us started. <laughs> Which is okay. But you're not going to get anything deep out of that. You're just going to get a covering. Now, folks, if it's a windy day, do you just want a, a tarp? Or do you want bricks? Bricks over you to protect you. So, therefore, in your prayer time, ask God to fix you change you, alter the way you look at things so you can see things the way he wants you to see them. And literally ask him. Remember, prayer is you're like you're working the clay and you're pushing in areas for God to flow into. So your words are very powerful. That's why Jesus said, by your words you're justified and by your words you're condemned. He says, a man will, life will be filled by the fruit of his lips. Well, that just kills me. <laughs> I'm dying if I do. I'm dying if I don't. You're killing me. Why do we use such phrases when we're so alive? Everyone look at your neighbor and says, I don't. <laughs> I've worked with enough people to have some phrases. Why do we express joy with death? You ever notice that? How Satan has worked. Well, you should notice that. It's been all in front of you the whole time. But now you're waking up. You're beginning to see what the word is showing us. And we're beginning to understand greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Greater is he that walks before us than anybody can come against us. Greater is he that's surrounding us. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is our God. And you are his people. Don't have pride about it, but have confidence in your God. So Colossians chapter 3 now, verses 14 through 17. Whatever we do in word and deed, be what? Thankful. And Becky, I want you to know when I preach, I'm not yelling at you, okay? She, she thought the first time she heard me preach that I was yelling at her. No, it's just preaching. It comes on me, and I try to do my best to kind of guide it. All right, verse 14 says, But above all these things, put on love. Everyone say yes. yes. Let us be known as a loving church, a forgiving church, a church that won't hold anything against anyone, so that we may be blessed in the days to come. Amen. And let... The peace of God rule in your heart. That means control your heart. Let God's peace control you. Okay? How many know that people break down sometimes? People have problems. Now, let me point out some wisdom for you. <laughs> what they need to do is put a table here for you. Oh, you. One of these days, they'll pick up on that. But not now while we're on camera. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I have to direct, and so with the church is small enough, I can direct. Don't ever let her sit there without a table. Okay, all right. I'm training new ushers. They don't know it yet. All right, now okay, let's go on. It says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. In other words, be ruled by the peace. If you don't have a peace about it, it's either timing's off, something's off. Pray, pray, pray. And which also you were called to one body. And then it says, be what? Thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another with psalms. You know what a psalm is? A psalm is a poem. J-E-S-U. Or it can be a song. An ode, a poem, a song. Back in the day of David, they had lyres and different kind of harp stringed instruments. And David would pull out his flute or his lyre, and he would sing while he's waiting for the sheep to just enjoy themselves. Singing and worshiping. God was training him for being a pastor, of being a king when he was a little shepherd boy. Think about your background. The things you've been through that you did that were good before you even were saved. God's conditioning you and getting you ready. I, you know I, how I know that? 
because there's something, a gift that I had when I was young that I still have now. It's just for a different source, from a different source. That's a gift to gab. <laughs> I mean, when I was younger, I had such a following. I did. 30, 40 people everywhere I went. Thought I was something. But the problem was I had nobody to tell anything good to. <laughs> and when my money ran out and my pot ran out and, and me stopped buying the beer, all my friends just left. Isn't that amazing? Aren't you glad when we serve Jesus not that way? Amen. <laughs> yes. All right. A couple of points I want to give you, all right? Okay. We are to put on Christ's love because it causes us to be inseparable. If I love you no matter what, okay, all right, then you don't have to perform for our friendship. Did you know a lot of people think friendship means... I'll scratch your back and you scratch my back when friendship isn't that at all. The true word for friendship means that you're going to care for somebody no matter what. So be careful when you say, you're my friend. Hello. I want to say to God, I know you as a father. I know you as my friend. Took a while for me to relax and become a friend of God. I mean, it takes a while, and you are God's friend. He considers you his child. But you know, you, I don't know if you, how many here have children? How many know that your child can be your child, but not be your friend? So family is the church. We're a church family. But not all your brothers and sisters are going to be people you're going to like. But you still need to pray and love for them and forgive them. Say amen. You don't pick your family. God does. So... You learn to love them. It's an exercise of love and care. Say, oh me, somebody. Let's go on. All right, so look at this. Point one. We are to put Christ's love first because it causes us to be glued together. It's the bond of perfection. Two, we are to be letting peace rule our hearts instead of stress. Or the need to get something done. Here, my life has been simplified so much only by God. And I still feel when I walk from my house to, my ch to the church over here that I have to hurry up. There's something in me that wants me to hurry up. And then I can realize I, there's anything I need to hurry up for. I didn't promise I'd be there. I didn't do all these things. So don't set yourself up. Flow with God. So, yeah, we have to keep our commitments, and yeah, you have to follow your contract, and if you're employed. But, you know, there might be in you that feeling of trying to get her done and trying to hurry up. That's not from God. God is not in a hurry. Now, I'm not talking to you, but if it fits, kind of apply it, okay? I'm just saying God is never in a hurry unless somebody's dying, and he needs you there immediately. In this case, no. So... Think things through dozens of times before you do it. Ask God's wisdom so that when you do do it, it just flows. Say amen, everybody. Amen. amen. And if it's not working and you're still in that rut, ask God for wisdom, pull you out. If anyone lacks wisdom, the Bible says, let him ask of God. All right. Thirdly, whatever we do in word and deed, we're to do with a loving, thankful heart. Can you say amen? Because our works are being judged. If we do things for ourselves, fire is put to it and it burns up. We do things for God and for others in love, then it's gold, silver, and precious stone. You know, you know the phrase. So, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to show you something here. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18, very small scripture, it says, Rejoice always. How often are we to rejoice? Always. When your boss calls you in early, what are you to do? Rejoice. <laughs> I had him. Hello. <clears throat> I 
when your landlord says you're late, what should you do? Because we rejoice in Christ, not in what we do or don't do per se. You see? Amen. And if you continue to meet with God, God's going to teach you how to make those adjustments of your life so you're not a welfare recipient all the time. Do you know what a welfare recipient is? That's somebody, now I'm not picking on anybody because I was one. That's not your old cheese. We used to get the big cubes of cheese and I used to stand the welfare lines down there in, in Pua. I could tell you lots of stuff. I'd love to just spend some time with you and talk about some things. But anyway, what, what the welfare system does, because Satan's got a hold of it, it's a good system per se. But what it does is it causes the people that depend on it to stay dependent on it. It locks them into a mentality of the world owes me. Hello? People that run under that system, now I'm not everybody, okay? People that run under that system don't know how to say thank you. Because they think everything's a handout. And if you bless somebody, they don't turn around and say thank you. In fact, they get mad if you don't bless them. So welfare's mentality is not a good thing. Because it keeps us poor thinking. Keeps us in the poor thing. You've got God living on the inside of you. It's different now. Say amen. amen. It's different now. Don't run by your past mentalities, mindsets. Not only that, but have you ever been a victim? How many ever been ripped off? I one time took my girlfriend to Seattle and we got robbed. I mean, 120 bucks, there went lunch. You feel like you've been violated, but listen, people that operate under a giving system that are not saved, they'll produce an attitude that everybody owes them something. And so don't get, don't get in that because God is not that way. God is like a big Santa Claus, but he's not. Okay. He forgives. He talks to you. He corrects you. He does all these loving things. But at the same time, he's more willing to help you with everything than you are to think that he is. Oh, I don't want to bother God with that. He's too busy. <laughs> Never too busy. All right. Are you with me? So here's the scripture. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. That means every time you see something, pray about it real quick. And if something is not working right, pray about it right, but right away. Don't take long. Lord, take authority over that. Lord, there's an accident up there, Lord. Lord, I just pray that everything's all right in Jesus' name. You hear Simon. Lord, go with the people, Lord God, that are going to help. Be with the people that are needing help. And God, go right into the middle of it and do your thing in Jesus' name. Do that way. Keep God, inviting God in those areas. You're sowing and you're reaping. You're sowing and you're reaping. Pretty soon you're going to be so blessed. People will be hanging out around you. Maybe some dew drops will fall out on them. Make them jealous by your love for God. And then it says something really strange. It, Thank God for everything. And it says, pray without ceasing and everything give thanks. Now, this sounds like it's saying whatever you're going through, thank the Lord. It's not what it's saying. It's saying whatever situation you're in, if it's not pleasant, keep thanking God. He's not doing it. He just needs your attention so he can get you out of it. You see, if you're not paying attention to God, how are you going to know to grab the, the hook so he can pull you out? And some people, they're so miserable for such a long time that if they ever did get fixed, they think something's wrong. I'm serious. I've met people like that. Their lives have been trashed. They get born again. They get saved. We start giving them some word. They start practicing the word and their life starts coming together. And then they look around, they go, something's wrong. Why? I'm not under, I'm not under trial. I don't feel like I'm under a battle or stress. 
that's the whole idea. You're not supposed to live that way. That's what causes cancer and sickness under the stresses of life. That's part of the curse, gentlemen, ladies. And Christ has redeemed us from the curse. So you have to get with him and learn his ways so he can pull you out. Don't you know that Jesus walked through the crowds that hated him, walked through the people that were going to stone him to death, and they could not touch him. And everybody goes, that's because he was Jesus. And that's the religious outlook. No, Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. Learn how to walk with Christ so Satan can't touch you. He says, the one that's born of God, listen, so we're in 1 John, I think 5. He that's born of God keepeth himself in God, and the wicked one touches him not. Now that's the scripture. I don't care what your opinion is. Scripture says if you get into position, Satan can't touch you. Hello. Remember John the Beloved? He said to Peter, Peter, I'm shotgun. I'm going to be with Jesus so close. You're going to have to be second, Peter. You hear John talk, Peter, I'm God's favorite. Peter, I'm God's favorite. You're just a big mouth. Then you see in Revelation, so in love with God, they couldn't kill the man. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. He was the only disciple of Jesus out of the 12. They could not kill. His relationship was so good with God, they couldn't touch him. Now, if you want to think religiously, oh, that was John. God just did that for him. That's how Satan works. He'll tell you, it's for John, but not for you. No, all the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen. So we need to know how to appropriate those things. Say amen. amen. My third point, delivered from darkness and sin. Say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, please, verse 12. We are to put Christ's love ahead of us so we just, you know, gel together. Colossians 1, verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. That he delivered us from the power of darkness, conveyed or translated us into the kingdom of his dear son of his love. In whom, or in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Give thanks that you are alive. Give thanks you have breath in your lungs. Give thanks that you have your mind and wit about you. Give thanks that you can come to God and surrender. Give thanks that you can ask God to help and assist you in every matter of your life. Give thanks. Let's be known as God's thankful people. God's joyous, grateful people. Can you say amen? And then it says he delivers us from the power of darkness, conveyed us into the kingdom of his son of love, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness. We are to give thanks, for we are now in a kingdom that operates on different principles. You see, our economy is different than the world's economy. Yes, gas may be over five bucks. California is probably over seven. But God is not short. This doesn't surprise God at anything. The key is not to get wrapped up in what people who know nothing do. The key is get wrapped up in God and let him bring in the extra money to pay for the extra price of the gas. Don't start arranging your life because of things in the world. Arrange your life because of the wisdom of God in your heart. Hope you got that. Don't arrange your life for the world, for the things that you see and experience in the world, but arrange your heart with God. You're in a different economy. That's why I tithe, because it really doesn't matter 
when I tithe and give what I give, God says, you're taken care of. All I have to do is stay in love. And he says, he will rebuke the devourer. He will bless me. He would do all, just, just the tithing, let alone the praying and all the other stuff we do. You know, you got to learn that the word of God is given to us as a weapon too, to put salt on the slug and let him shrivel up because of the light that you bear. Get revelations of this, people. Get revelations, wonderful children of God. We are to give thanks, for now we are in the kingdom of his dear son. We are to give thanks because we've been delivered from darkness, translated into the kingdom of his light. And we're to give praise and thanksgiving because we walk with God and he walks with us. Folks, you never get up alone. I can't understand why a Christian would think God would leave you when he says, I will never leave you. You see how our mind is different from the God in our heart now. You see, you have God in your heart. Your head is just not smart enough to regulate your life by itself. It's just not smart enough. It, you got a good head. You're pretty. You're handsome. But our heads only operate on 5% of its capability. That's why we go to God and get his percentage. His grace in on it. Amen. Have you ever been in a place knowing not what to do? You went to God and he showed you? Hopefully, it should happen every day. If not, it can. Say amen. Say, I've been delivered. Listen to Psalms 140 verse 13. It says, surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Everyone, let's try this. Lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands. Say, thank you, Jesus. Can you sense that spirit drop down on you like that? Your hands, your, you see, that, that's the signal to God. Look, I can, I have time, okay. Remember, Jesus was pierced in his, in his wrists, not really his, his hands, his wrists, because it would rip out of there through the fingers. And then, and he bled, okay. When we lift our hands, you are lifting up your covenant. You say, God, I surrender. I believe in your covenant. The reason why we pray our prayers out loud, because we honor the covenant by speaking the word of God, which is the covenant. And when we sing, listen, if you, if you don't have a good voice, it's okay. I don't either. But if you sing, even if you don't know the words, just go la, 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 la. Find the harmony and make a noise. And just get into it. The, the, the phrase of your lips, honor your covenant and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why God wants you to speak good things. Say amen. All right. For example, for my new sister, Sherry. Sherry, I'm going to pray for you. Can you feel that? I got to make her laugh. She likes to laugh, so that's good. No, and that's what a lot of you do think you're praying. You no, know, when you're just being lazy and not moving your lips. Don't get mad at me because you know I'm right. Okay, that's not a prideful thing for me to say. Because I used to pray here. Nothing got done. It was a good thought. <laughs> and you hear him today. Send your thoughts our way. I don't want to send my thoughts your way. I want to pray. Can you say amen, Becky? Yeah. No, that's right. Now, so we've been delivered from darkness. Finally, last point. Stay thankful. Stay very thankful every day. Lord, make me thankful. Give a joyous heart in my heart. The joy of the Lord is my... Right. And my very heart does good like a... A joyous spirit sustaineth your infirmities. That means if people break down with colds and stuff, they usually have their heart broken four or five times. Their spirit. And now they're kind of maintaining. When your spirit is agitated a lot, it can't really break, but it's agitated, you can't keep yourself in a healthy mode. You'll break down and get a cold or something will happen. Now look at me in that tone of voice. I'm telling you the truth. 
Because if you're under stress all the time and you're arguing, people, some people, they just made to argue. You get under that, and next thing you know, you got symptoms and stuff like that. You're letting that affect your spirit. Don't do that. Say, Lord, help protect my spirit so it sustains my infirmity. Because who lives in your spirit? Who lives in your spirit? About time you wake up. You are a contained vessel of God. And Jesus is Lord. So, Ephesians chapter 5, please. Look at verse 17 through 21 and we'll finish. Boy, I did pretty good today. Yesterday was, I mean, last week was, we had all that extra stuff. So, okay. Chapter uh, 5, verse 17. Therefore, do not be unwise. Everyone say amen. <laughs> we need the wisdom. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, let me put it in, in carry, okay? God wants you happy and joyous and filled and like children with fullness at a birthday party every day. And you say, well, that's hard to really kind of imagine. Would you, you are a parent. Some of you are parents. You want your kids sad every day? Your kid, your kid gets up in the morning and says, I'm sorry, a thief broke in last night and beat the tar out of me. But I'm here this morning for breakfast. No, as a parent, we want the best for our children. We want to see you smile. I'm talking on God's behalf. He wants to see you laugh. Tell, tell a funny joke. Good joke. You know, I was asking some people the other day, this is a funny little joke, and I said, you know, every one of us are a certain part of the body. I can see my sister over here, Sherry, she's an arm because she does things. I can see Seth over here, he's a leg, amen, and both Sherry and Seth look at me and say, well, who are you? And I says, I'm the mouth. <laughs> You see, it's fun to laugh. It's good to be healthy. And God wants you and has done everything to see that you get it. Now, it's how many lies do you still have working on you that we have to wash out? Think about it like this. How many lies are things that we think is the truth that really isn't quite the truth? Actually, that we allow or, or practice un, even maybe subconsciously. And so you ask God to tar, start removing those things from you. So you don't get back into the, you know, you pray and God do something and then you talk like God never did. Aren't you glad, Joanna, that Jesus, when you prayed, he found Maxine. But you kept on talking like she was still lost. And what we want you to know is when you pray, God listens. And he's so willing to answer your prayer if it's not a selfish thing. Because we can't pray and miss it. But you won't do that if your love is love for God and people. You won't do that and miss. God will say, well, and just remember, God is such a gentleman. He needs the invitation. You don't ask, you don't have. Well, how can God just sit there and not want to bless me? He wants to bless you, but he can't bless you against your will. And if you're unwilling because you're so caught up in how negative you are, he can't bless you because you keep pushing him away. So instead say, Lord, I've been negative. Forgive me. <laughs> Learn more about ourselves. Learn more about how much you're resisting, how much you're accepting. And ask God to begin to fine tune you. Right? Stay very thankful. In this mode where God is helping us and cleaning us and, and fixing us, we need to stay thankful. Why? Because then we stay in tune. It's like having your favorite station on. Amen. So let me read on. It says, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your hearts to the Lord. See, God wants us to be very thankful and very happy. Giving thanks always for all things unto God. Notice it did not say, and if you have a new translation, a newer translation, that will read, give thanks for everything that comes your way. How many know that's not true? 
Boy, you guys, are you that religious? It says, give thanks for all things to God. Didn't say thank God for bad days. Didn't say thank God for the plane crash that killed your mother. So whatever you're at, give thanks unto God for the things unto God. Jesus said it this way, render unto Caesar what's Caesar's and render unto God what is God. Give honor to whom honor is due. Has God ever hurt you? Has God ever disappointed you? Maybe you thought he did, but he didn't. Has God ever let you down in one degree or not? So we need to understand what God desires from us to be thankful. To stay joyous. And you know, see, if, so if I take a glass of water, did you guys do that experiment with the water, right? What was the results? Remember I asked some time back that people just take two glasses of water, one put it in a blessed point and the other one put it in a negative point and then bless the water there and then and curse the water here but don't cuss at it, you know, and stuff like that. And when, when you tasted it, what did you notice? What did you do? Come on, tell me. The good water was good and stayed good. Because the word spoken, the negative water tasted like metal and, and had a thump or negativeness to it. And you wouldn't even try your, that one. When I have good, why should I be negative? Good idea. So learn to speak good and bless your days. Learn to be thankful. If you don't understand, don't try to understand. Say, God, give me understanding. Then when he gives it to you, it'll come to you. If you try to figure things out too much, the devil will pick wind of it and he'll start feeding you the carrot. You know the carrot, the stick that comes over the, the jackass's head, the donkey's head, excuse me. That, that's a quote. And always... Something's going to happen always in the future. Always going to be there one day. Something always one day. And that's how he leads people. When God does things, it's not one day. It's now. And you go up into it. Do you see the difference? Oh, don't let anyone lead you around just by a false hope. God will never do that to his children. You got something out of this morning? Will you give some praise? Amen.